So today I want to show you the Oracle Lighting flush mount tail lights for the Jeep Gladiator. I was concerned about the original ones not uh, surviving the trail, so I went ahead and got these. Uh, hopefully this video will be of value if you're trying to decide whether you want to go this route or you just want to see what is a very simple install. Uh, hopefully you'll enjoy this. So one of the uh, things on the Gladiator that uh, is form over function are really these tail lights. I'm sure that the designers designed them thinking that they were cool looking, which I, I guess they are, but they do stick out a bit. And if you look at a lot of the trail vids, you've got uh, people tearing their tail lights off on the trails. And you can see just how much it sticks out. Uh, this skid protection that's part of the new bumper helps it some but if you see it's still pretty close and if you lean into a, a tree just that little bit would tear it right off I know talking to my four-wheel drive shop one of the big things they get asked is uh, if they can create some bars that actually come up to protect that that side panel there's the other side so Love, love the Gladiator, but not super thrilled about the prospect of ripping one of those suckers off because they, uh, they are fairly expensive. They're not giving those away. So today, we're going to be installing a set of the Oracle low-profile replacements. And uh, so we'll see how it goes. So here's a light test just to show you what the original ones look like. They're okay. The hazards. And then there's the backup lights. Not very bright. Opened up the tire carrier and the uh, tailgate, and I've got the new replacement lights out to put in place of those. They're supposed to be plug and play. We'll see how that works out. I'm assuming that is accurate. Uh, there's only a single bolt or two bolts actually, small little bolts there that need to be taken out and then you can just pop the, the tail light right off. So I'll get to that. So we need a 5 16th wrench. And then once you've got those bolts out, you just pull it, pull it out. And there you go. Once you've got the tail light loosened, you pull this plug back from the frame a bit, and you pull down the red tab, and then you release this. And also, you've got the sensor for the cross traffic detection there which will be installed at this spot in the new one. I can't film the entire process because I need both hands, but I'll film as much as I can. At this point, you just remove the six Phillips screws that uh, have the cross traffic sensor locked into the housing. And once you've got those six screws loose, you can pull it out and disconnect the cable.
you just unsnap the four black tabs on each corner and remove it from the housing. Now you remove the four small screws that hold the housing for the sensor from the new tail light. And then you install the sensor in that housing and then bolt it back to the tail light. That is the completed. We've transferred the cross traffic sensor over to the new light. This side uh, did not come with any instructions in the box. Uh, I did read somewhere that uh, you may or may not need this little uh, transistor, whatever in the world it is. Uh, some vehicles do need it, some don't. They include it in all of them. If you don't need it, you just unplug it. I don't really know for sure. You've got to secure this up inside of the housing. So you've got to find a spot to actually put it up in there out of the way so it doesn't rattle around. So I'll work on that. Now, once you've got the... Uh assembly all plugged in and ready to go i've already tested it to make sure the connections are good you align the, the pin with the grommet on both the top and the bottom and you just secure it and then make sure that your holes are lined up and then you reattach the bolts all right so we have a good test of the passenger side and i'll just repeat the process on the driver's side and so we've got everything all connected. It's much better, much lower profile. You can see that it doesn't stick out anywhere near the edge. A lot less likelihood of catching it on something on the trail. They look pretty sharp. We'll see how they actually work here in a sec. But overall, I'm pleased. And I understand that the backup portion is much brighter than the stock. So let's go ahead, fire it up, and I'll do the light test. All right, so an improvement. I, I like it a lot. I think that uh, it's going to be a lot safer. Uh, I'll have to check and see if the cross detection monitors work. I'm assuming that they do. Uh, but overall, this is a good improvement. This only took me about 40 minutes. 
and I was taking my time. As I said, there were no real instructions. It's all plug and play. Uh, just remember that you do have to remove the old sensor um, from its housing and put it into the new housing and connect the, the wires to it if you've got cross traffic detectors. And uh, then you've got to secure that little transistor up inside the frame I elected to use. It's got two holes, one on each side, top and bottom. And I used a small zip tie and I tied it to a wire loom and it wasn't moving around. So the last thing I want is that thing clanking around. So hopefully this is, uh, this is helpful. And if uh, you have any questions at all, just leave a comment below and uh, I'll try to answer anything that I can. But overall, a pretty simple upgrade. Thanks for watching. Install and initial impressions on the Oracle Lighting flush mount LED taillights for the Jeep Gladiator. I think they are going to be a very good addition. Uh, hopefully this video helped anybody that was trying to decide whether they wanted to go this route. Uh, although the installation is not very difficult, maybe some of that uh, will help as well. Uh, like and subscribe if you uh, enjoyed this video. I will be doing some future videos on uh, reviews of some of the equipment that I put on the Jeep. For instance, the Expedition 1 dual swing bumper. Uh, hopefully I'll get those done on the property next time. The, the property's a little bit more conducive to good video. I do apologize for the uh, view from my garage and the street noise. So if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe so that you can catch future content. Thank you very much for watching.